Have a special occasion that requires extra special fabric? I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion, and today I'll be offering some tips in working with sequin fabric. A special thanks goes to Richard Lowe, a professional designer who shared some of his insider secrets with us. There are many different types of sequin fabrics, but today's demonstration will cover sequins that are stitched onto a mesh or lightweight fabric. This is not an easy fabric to work with, but it's not impossible. Hopefully using our tips will make your first attempt easier. Don't give up on this beautiful but difficult fabric yet. Let's go ahead and get started. Sewing with a sequin fabric can be done in a home sewing machine, but it requires a lot of prep and that requires a lot of time. You definitely don't want to use a serger for this type of fabric. You also want to be aware of the care instructions. A lot of times this type of fabric is going to be dry clean only. When it comes to choosing a design or choosing a pattern, you want to go with a design that's as simple as possible. You don't want something that has a lot of details in it, something that has pleats and darts and buttonholes and pockets. The simpler the design, the easier it's going to be for you. This fabric can come in a woven fabric or it can come in sort of a stretch knit type fabric. You wanna make sure that you pay attention to which one you get onto. Now you can see I have this mesh fabric that's underneath the sequence. That's fairly common. You can get sequence that's like mine where they're more of laid flat and kind of next to each other or you can get the sequence that's sort of stacked on top of each other like shingles. Usually this type of fabric is a little bit easier to work with than the shingled stacked sequence. When doing your pattern layout, you need to imagine that this fabric has a nap to it. So you're following the same nap rules that you would for any other napped fabric. Especially if you're working with the stacked sequence fabric, the one that looks like shingles, you wanna make sure that they're mostly laying flat so they're going down, so this would, if, if they're going this direction as they're laying flat, I would place the top of my pattern this way and then the hemline going this way. And I would do that for all my pattern pieces. So it's all gonna be going in the same direction. You're going to lay your fabric so you're looking at the wrong side and it's gonna be a single layer. I'm cutting out each pattern individually, one at a time, instead of folding my fabric and then trying to get multiple pieces from one pattern piece. If for example, Let's say this is my skirt pattern, and I need to cut two out of this. I'm going to lay it down, and you can use fabric weights so you don't have to try to pin through the sequence. And I'm gonna use my fabric marker to draw an outline of this piece. And then if I need another one, so you need two opposites, I'm gonna shift this to another section of my fabric and lay it so it's face down. You just wanna make sure that you don't end up with two pieces that look exactly the same. If you're doing something that needs to be cut on a fold, such as a bodice, we're gonna pretend this is a bodice pattern. I'm going to lay it down. I'm gonna do an outline around the whole thing. Then carefully lift up your weights, flip over the pattern, and then I can go ahead and do the outline on the other section. Now this fabric can be extremely messy when you start working with it. So you wanna lay something down on your table and also on your floor, because once you start cutting this fabric, the sequins are gonna go flying everywhere and it just makes it a lot easier for cleanup. We're gonna pretend like this is one of my pattern pieces that I need to cut out of my fabric. So this outer line is the main outline of my pattern. The inner line is me marking where the seam allowance is. So you may need to look at your pattern piece and see if that's actually marked or it's actually stated on your pattern piece or you need to check your pattern directions. Usually it'll say something like seam allowance is five eighths of an inch unless otherwise stated. So if I know it, I'm gonna go ahead, measure in with my sewing gauge, mark what that seam allowance is and do my outline because I'm going to use some contrasting thread then to actually mark it so I can see it on the right side. Because if I was to flip this over and look at the right side, I can't see my fabric marker at all. So I'm just going to use some contrasting all-purpose thread on my needle, uh, hand needle here. And I'm just gonna do a quick running stitch to kind of mark both outlines. So again, I'm doing the outer line, which is the main line of my pattern, and then I'm gonna also do my seam allowance. And that way I'm gonna be able to see it when I flip it over to the right side. 
This is that same area now looking at the right side and you can see my running stitch is marking the outline and then also the seam allowance inside of it. Now we're going to remove all the sequence between our seam allowance and the outer line. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we want our seams to lie smoothly and we're not going to have all that bulk of the sequence underneath. I'm also going to remove any sequence that's directly on my seam allowance line. I want to get rid of all those sequence there. And the reason why I'm doing that is because our home sewing machine is really not going to like stitching on those sequence. You're going to continually have to replace your needle because it's going to break if you're trying to go through sequence. So by removing that, yes, it's very time consuming, but it'll make the sewing process run a lot smoother. To cut my sequence, you want to use really cheap scissors. You don't want to use your fabric scissors. And it's also a good idea to wear protective eyewear. So wear your glasses if you have them, because you don't want to get sequins flying into your eye. So I'm going to start by, this is the section I want to cut, but I'm just going to fold my sequence or fold the section. So you can see some of it is hanging off the folded edge. And then I could come in and just kind of cut more than one sequence at a time. And I'm just going to keep folding it in different ways so I can get it. You may not be able to get every single sequence and you might have to cut some individually, but at least you can make a pass and cut multiple at once. And I'm just basically cutting these sequence in half. Now after you've cut a bunch and you have a bunch of sequence halves in that section, like I just cut right here, it doesn't really look like it did much, but you can just come through and either pick out the sequence like this with your nails by scratching it and they should just go flying off. Or if you don't have fingernails, you can use some tweezers and just kind of pull them out. You really want to make sure that you're trying not to cut your seam allowance line or your running stitches. Sometimes it happens. If it happens, it's not that big of a deal. But you kind of want to have a general idea on where that is. You don't go too far into your fabric piece of where you're actually physically going to see it after you sew it. And you don't want to really cut the mesh underneath. Now usually this isn't going to unravel. So if you do a little snip, it's not that big of a deal, but you just kind of want to avoid doing that. And you'll notice if you look at the reverse side, there's a bunch of thread that's hold holding onto the sequence. So if you accidentally cut that, you may start letting some of the sequence off that way and it may let off more than you want. So if that happens and you accidentally cut the threads back here, you may have to tie it individually just to prevent any more sequence from coming off than what you want. Here's what my piece looks like with most of the sequence cleared away. You can see areas where I accidentally clipped into my running stitch. I wouldn't stress out too much about it because it is kind of hard to do. But at this point now, I would go ahead and take those same cheap scissors and cut on my main outline to cut this piece out. Let's talk about sewing on our sequin fabric. So I switched to a Microtex needle. If you want something that's super fine, you probably want to use about a size 70. I'm just using all purpose thread. For doing a straight stitch, if you're doing woven fabric, you want to do a straight stitch, you probably want to do a longer stitch length. So I'm doing it about a 3.5. If you're sewing on stretch fabric, then you're going to want to use a stretch stitch or do a narrow zigzag stitch. If you, your sewing machine has trouble getting through uh, a really light fabric such as this mesh. You can just cut a strip of tissue paper that you can place over it and that should help it feed through the sewing machine a little bit easier. So I'm just going to do a, an example of a seam here. And when you do it, just start very slowly. You want to do a very slow stitch. Just take your time. You don't really have to do any back stitching. Instead, we'll do that by hand. If you use tissue paper to help you with your seam, after you finish your seam, you can just tear the tissue paper off. And then don't forget that you still need to tie a knot at the end so it doesn't come undone since we didn't do any back stitching. So all I'm going to do is just take my two ends here. I'm just going to create a loop and then bring it through the loop and try to get the knot as close to the base of your fabric as possible and that should be enough. To press your seams, you want to use a low heat. You're going to use whatever setting you would use in order to press rayon. You want to make sure that you're doing it on the wrong side and that you use a press cloth. which could just be simple 100% cotton muslin or something like that. 
because you want to protect your fabric as best you can. You want to make sure that your setting is not too hot because what could happen is you could melt or discolor your sequence. After you create a seam, if you do have some of your running stitch showing from when you originally prepped your fabric, you can very carefully remove that. And you also want to save scraps of your sequin fabric so that you could pull off some whole sequence pieces and then we can use it to fill in some of these bare spots so it's not quite so obvious. We're going to fix some of those bare spots along the seam line. So you can see I already sewed on one sequin and I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Now you can use silk thread, you can use invisible thread. Obviously you want to do something that kind of blends in. You don't want to use bright green contrasting threads like I am. Just doing it so it kind of stands out a little bit more. So I tied a knot and I'm just doing this by hand with a hand needle and thread. And I came up from underneath so my knot would be hidden on the wrong side and then I just slipped on one sequin. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit of mesh behind it, just a couple strands, and come up through the center and pull it. You want to do this slow because it tends to get caught on the other parts of it over here. And then I'm just going to go through the mesh, just grab a little piece again. But I'm, you can see I'm going on the opposite side because I want to add another one right next to it. And now you can see it's attached on top and it's attached on the bottom and now I can go ahead and repeat the process with a few more. If you're using sequin fabric in order to make a garment, I highly recommend that you use a lining. The reason for this is because this fabric tends to be very scratchy and you don't want it to be scratching your skin and stuff like that. So with a lining, it's going to feel more comfortable. If whatever you're making has a facing on the inside, use a different fabric. Don't use the sequin fabric. Also, another reason is because of the mesh fabric, this, this type of fabric tends to be see-through. So with the lining, it's definitely going to help with that. Also, because it's not really easy to finish the raw edges in this type of fabric, it makes a nice finished look on the inside of the garment as well by putting in a lining. For interfacing, you definitely want to use a sew-in interfacing. One fabric that you can use instead of using the typical sew-in interfacing what normally only comes in white or basic colors is you can use a silk organza or a polyester organza. So this will give a little bit of stability to your fabric but you can sew it in and it's going to look nice. If you remove your sequins from the seam allowance then it is possible to put in a zipper. You may have to put it in by hand by hand sewing it in. If you are going to do a zipper, I highly recommend that you do an invisible zipper. It's just going to look the nicest. Now if you look at my seam line here with my zipper, you'll notice that I still have some bare spots. You need to be careful when you're filling that in with extra sequins because you want to make sure that you're still able to unzip and zip up your zipper and that these aren't going to get in the way and you're not going to accidentally cover up your zipper. Also another good idea is to add little ribbon garment loops to the side seams of your lining. That way when you put this on a hanger, it's being held by this and you're not damaging your sequins at all in your garment. Lastly, we're going to talk about the hem. Now you can remove your sequins from the hem allowance if you want to, but the problem is on the right side you're then going to need to fill in the area so it looks good. Or you can just leave it if you plan on covering most of it with your lining. You can see I just folded up one time. I did not tuck it under because with the mesh fabric we don't have to worry about any fraying. It's probably best just to hand sew your hem into place. Now I'm using my bright green thread again for this part, but regardless if you're hand sewing the hem or you're doing a seam, it's probably best to use a thread that doesn't exactly match your fabric. So if you need to take out any of your seams or take out any of your stitches, you can easily see that from the fabric and you won't accidentally cut something you're not supposed to. So I've already actually started this. So my first stitch so I can hide my knot is I'm going to come up underneath the part that I folded over up here at the top of my hem. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit of the mesh fabric underneath. You may see a few of these stitches on the right side, but it's probably not going to be that noticeable if you keep your stitches small. So I'm going to pull that through 
and then I'm just going to grab a little bit of the folded over part again at the top. So you can, if I pull this away, you can see I'm just doing the top part. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit of the mesh fabric underneath. And so I'm going to do this for all of my hem. We hope you found these tips helpful. And if you have your own tricks in working with sequin fabric, please let us know in the comments. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library of well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.